From the depths of the ocean all the way up to the edge of our atmosphere, there is no shortage of viruses or harmful bacteria. Foamy fish, giants, mutants, and mushroom killers, it's all here, so let's take a look. Starting off our list today, we have a brand new virus found 8,900 feet below sea level, making it the deepest known virus to be identified in Earth's oceans. Discovered in 2023, the virus known as VB underscore HMEY underscore H4907 is assumed to be a bacteriophage, which basically means it eats bacteria. Luckily, it's not seen to be a threat to people because as far as we know, it doesn't eat human cells. While this is all good and well, as the global temperature of the ocean continues to rise, affecting ocean currents and stirring up sediment, it is likely that more of these undiscovered deep sea viruses will make their way to the reachable parts of the ocean. And next time, we might not be so lucky. Next up, we have the recently discovered 48,500 year old zombie virus discovered beneath the permafrost of Antarctica. Not only did scientists recently discover it, in 2023 they also reanimated it. That's right, they reanimated an ancient virus which had been laying dormant in the ice for tens of thousands of years. Why? Science. Is it safe? Well, scientists working on the reanimation project claim that the risks are low, but that there are still very clear risks. I don't know man, it sounds to me like the world is about to be living in a sci-fi movie gone wrong. Luckily, the virus in question, the one restored to its former glory by albeit well-meaning but dangerously optimistic scientists, only targets single-celled amoebas, unicellular organisms with the ability to change shape. Which is great and all, but the precedent set by this experiment does really make me worry about our future. The scientist who performed the reanimation maintains he did it to shed light on the potential risk of much more dangerous Antarctic viruses, ability to resurface and infect humans should the permafrost of Antarctica and other places continue to melt. Bonus fact, as the Antarctic permafrost continues to thaw, it also has the potential to release chemical and radioactive waste into our ecosystems. Not a virus, but still pretty scary. Moving on from the zombie virus to the zombie deer virus. In 2023, the first death due to chronic wasting disease, aka the zombie deer virus, to take place in the Yellowstone National Park occurred. While the ailment has been around for some time, it made headlines last year as the reality of its rapid migration across North America has begun to seriously worry wildlife conservation scientists. And considering the fact that the disease causes deers to suffer some pretty adverse effects and there is no known cure or vaccine, I don't blame them. Infected deer suffer ill effects in their brains, spinal cords, and tissue, often leading to them experiencing lack of muscle coordination, difficulty swallowing, excessive thirst, excessive urination, and excessive salivation, and of course, oftentimes, death. Okay, this next one is not technically a bacteria, but we're going to talk about it anyways because, well, it's mutant space bacteria that was recently discovered aboard the ISS. You see, in recent years, bacteria has been purposely brought to the ISS so that scientists can attempt to solve the mystery of how viruses both act and survive while in space. And the results are kind of terrifying. A while after NASA sent the drug resistant bacteria Enterobacter bugen, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, up to be isolated on the space station, they noticed that it had actually mutated into something that was both genetically and functionally distinct from its Earth counterpart. Not only that, but they also discovered that this new mutant bacteria could coexist with multiple other organisms, and in some cases, it actually aided in their survival. So basically they took an already drug resistant disease causing bacteria to space just to have it not only mutate to survive, but also aid other potentially harmful bacteria in their own space survival as well. I swear to God, how many times has television warned us about this? Next up, we've got seven, that's right, seven newly discovered RNA mushroom viruses, or in more scientific terms, mycoviruses, whose genetic information is stored in the form of RNA as opposed to DNA, and they affect fungi. What's cool about these viruses is that they can actually be beneficial because in certain cases mycoviruses can be used for biocontrol, which basically means that they are living things that can be used to make harmful fungus, whether the fungus is harmful to people or the environment, 
weaker. The viruses which were found infecting edible mushrooms in labs have not yet been studied on mushrooms in their natural environment, but regardless they have provided some great insight into the diversity of fungal viruses around today. Next on the list we have a novel foamy fish virus which was discovered in the genomes of both sharks and rays back in 2023. Like the mushroom viruses, the foamy fish virus is an RNA virus. Unlike the mushroom virus, however, foamy fish virus does not cause any kind of disease or harm to its host. Rather, they just integrate their genetic material into the DNA of the host cell. They get their name from the fact that generally after integration, the cells hosting the virus will gain a kind of like foam appearance. The virus was found after scientists screened 11 genomes and 10 transcriptome sequence assemblies of cartilaginous fish. Next up we have the Nipah virus, an emerging bat-borne zoonotic disease, meaning that it can be transmitted naturally from animals to humans or from humans to animals. Basically it's not good, we've also seen stuff like this before. While the virus, which cannot be treated with medication nor prevented with a vaccine, was originally discovered in 1999, in January of this year, 2024, scientists discovered two people, one male and one female, who died of the disease. The male, aged 38, developed a fever before experiencing respiratory issues, restlessness and insomnia, and eventually death after contracting the virus, which doctors agreed was the result of consuming infected raw date palm sap. The female, aged 33, experienced fevers, altered conscientiousness, and even seizures leading up to her diagnosis. She died the same day the laboratory confirmed that she had been suffering from Nyap. Next up, moving on from a very scary virus with no known cure to a pretty positive one, which can actually combat one of the deadliest human parasites known to man, Nagleria fowleri, which is infamous among scientists for causing tissue destroying brain infections and almost always being fatal. Recently, however, in early 2024, scientists discovered a special giant virus, a virus known for its unusually large particles and complex genomes that infects the harmful microbe. While this is a major scientific advancement, unfortunately, these new giant viruses may not be viable treatments for the parasite that generally kills 16 people per year due to the challenging accessibility of the human brain, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Next, we have a new heat resistant RNA viral genome found inhabiting high temperature acidic hot springs in both Yuzen and Kirishima, Japan, which has forced scientists to consider the fact that there might very well be a third RNA virus kingdom completely separate from the previous known two. The virus, named the hot spring RNA, Creative, or HSRV, was found in temperatures between 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, 150 to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. And scientists assume that it infects thermoacidophilic bacteria, microorganisms that have developed mechanisms to successfully persist in unusually hot and acidic environments. What's really cool about this is the fact that these kind of environments are where a lot of scientists believe life originates from. And and finally, we have the mulberry virus, a newly discovered virus affecting mulberry trees, obviously, discovered by scientists in China in 2023. A study in which viruses were isolated from mulberry leaves taken from a temple in Fujian, China, revealed a brand new virus that affects both the leaf and fruit development of the tree. Unlike some other viruses that don't really have an impact on their host, this newly discovered one is a possible threat to the mulberry population of China, and so, at this time, scientists are super eager to find out more in order to assess the virus's potentially harmful impact to the future of the mulberry trees, commonly referred to as the trees of life or the herbs of immortality. All right, you guys, that was a lot. I hope you're feeling good. Drink your vitamin C. Oranges, kiwis are a really good source of vitamin C. I've been your host, Hannah Thompson, and I will see you in the next one.